My name is Kate Thompson Davy. I'm primarily a freelance journalist. I'm also an erstwhile podcaster. I used to uh, write and produce and do all of the things for a podcast called It Happened Here. It's still on all the various channels if you wanted to check it out. I haven't put a new episode up for a couple of years. But it is my hope and intention to get back to it. My day job, however, is freelance journalist. Can objects really be haunted? Um, I think mine is going to be a bit of a disappointing answer for your audience because I'm inclined to say no. I, I'm not sure that I believe in haunting in any way. Then again, I'm also not arrogant enough to suggest that I know everything about the world and there are lots of things that we don't have evidence for or that we can only speculate. I don't pretend to have all of those answers, but my gut feel is I'm a skeptic when it comes to haunting. Have I ever encountered a cursed or haunted object? Again, because I'm a skeptic, I'm inclined to say no, but the truth is that there are definitely objects, uh, artifacts, and even areas that I find incredibly eerie and have left a lasting impression on me. Uh, one such place is uh, Baden-Powell Drive, when you drive into Cape Town past Kailicha and the flats into Musenberg. Every single time I drive down there, and I, I drive it fairly often, I think about Norman Afsal Simons, the man dubbed the Station Strangler, and the fact that he disposed of a lot of his victims in those dunes. Now, there's some controversy about whether or not he was responsible for all of the killings that were attributed to him. In court, he was only found guilty on a limited basis. But whether or not we attribute all of those to him, I think about not just the people, the young men who lost their lives in those dunes, but the men and boys that we didn't find and how many other bodies there might be in those spaces. And it never fails to, I mean, creep me out is the wrong term, but it makes me sad and I would call that the closest thing I can think of to a haunted area. What precautions should people take when dealing with potentially haunted items? As a skeptic, I've already said that I'm not sure that we do have haunted items, but I always think it's best to leave things well alone when they are creepy. And that goes for the same, uh, or rather the same goes for things that might have been uh, implicated in a crime. If you are concerned about something, you need to turn to an expert, whether that expert is a crime or a paranormal expert. What's the creepiest story you've heard about a haunted object? Um, for me, the creepiest object that I can think of, well, I don't know if it's the creepiest, but certainly one that sticks with me is the pocketbook that has been made out of the skin of William Burke. Um, William Burke and William Hare are quite famous old timey murderers in Scotland. The story used to go that they were uh, grave robbers, that they took bodies out of graves in order to sell them to Edinburgh University, uh, to the surgeons who were teaching uh, surgery on cadavers. Uh, we now know that they weren't necessarily digging graves, they were actually murdering the lodgers who came to stay at their houses. After they were caught and as Burke was found guilty of one of the murders and sentenced to death, he was actually uh, dissected and his skeleton was on display at the very medical school that he had been selling his victims to. And there is a pocketbook uh, made from Burke's skin that is still on display in the Surgeon's Hall Museum in Edinburgh today. I, whether or not it's haunted, I can't say, but it is certainly 
a creepy object that I would not want to walk around with. And I, I am interested in why a pocketbook, uh, which can be used or was typically associated with police, right? Uh, did someone who investigate that case go off and use the pocketbook of a killer while pursuing other killers? It's just a interesting and deeply creepy object. Do you believe that objects can retain energy from traumatic events or emotions? I believe that they will always retain the, or they will always have that impression on us. So if something has terrible has gone down in a space for you, if an object has been used in a terrible way, we are not as complex um, a species as we like to think. And those associations run deep and they will always have a very real psychological effect on us, whether or not that's because of um, a paranormal player involved or whether that's psychology, I can't say. But I, I, I have a friend who, um, unfortunately, uh, her father is accused of murdering her stepmother uh, and she can't come into my area to visit me because what happened happened just down the road from where I eventually bought. Those things are always going to have power over us and it's not for me to say whether that is, you know, from a ghost or from trauma. How do you think haunted objects uh, affect the people who come into contact with them? I think that we are storytellers by nature. I, you know, human beings, we share the stories and stories have a great impact on us. So whether or not you are the directly involved party to begin with, if someone tells you a story about a murder weapon, about um, a book uh, that's covered in human skin, about a mirror that people saw their doom in, that's going to have an effect whether or not you think the stories are true we're always going to make those associations and i think that they do shape the way that we then interact with them that's why a, a pocketbook of burke's skin for example remains an item on display in a museum because we are fascinated um, by creepy objects by terrifying stories by the dark side of human beings and what they inflict on the earth and what they have encountered. Have you ever experienced any negative effects from interacting with a haunted or cursed item? Um, no, not specifically. There are definitely um, things that weigh on the mind, let's call it that. I, I have a collection of newspaper clippings about the Station Strangler murders, um, a huge collection of them that a friend of mine lent me when I was doing the research for that pod. And I, you know, even knowing that they are just pieces of paper telling a story, an awful story, I never feel entirely comfortable having them and I like to make sure that they that I know where they are in my house. I'm quite keen to give them back to my friend as soon as possible. In fact, I'm not sure why I haven't. And you can all speculate on the effect that that might have had on the way I interact with them. Oh, and just to add to that one, my father passed away a couple of years ago. He had just bought a new car, even though um, he suffered from dementia and probably should not have been driving. And certainly I think um, the people who sold him that car acted unethically. And when he drove that car, I was very angry about it for a long time. And then after his death, my mother said to me, do you want to buy the car off his estate? Because my own car was kaput at the time. And I did. And it's the funniest thing because I've really made peace with my father and the decisions he made before his death by spending time in that car. I love that car. I'm not a car person, but I feel sometimes that when I climb into it, my dad's 
in there with me saying, let's go on an adventure, let's do something, turn the music up, let's put the windows down and feel the sea air. And I don't know, is that an actual presence or is that his influence on me forever? As for the ethics of buying and selling haunted objects, there is um, a very big trade in objects associated with tragedy. Uh, in the true crime space, we know about like people trading and collecting and auctioning off uh, things that belong to Ted Bundy or Charles Manson or any of those people. And I have to say, I don't find it very tasteful to profit off those things. If you've come, if you are a victim or, or associated with a victim and you tap into that trade to your own benefit that's not something i'm necessarily going to judge you know that's up to you but when we as outsiders look at someone else's tragedy as something that we can turn into monetary value for ourselves i'm uncomfortable with that and i would suggest you don't but you're a free person so i can't tell you what to do but for me it's a solid no